Down to Art, conversations about the creative process with your host, Christy Gordon. In this episode, we'll be talking about how to talk about your art, which is something that's so important and I think something that a lot of artists struggle with. It can be so hard to know what to say when you're out and someone asks you what kind of art you do. And today, Marina Granger, the founder of the Artist Advisory, will help us figure out once and for all how to answer that question. Marina has nearly 15 years of experience working with galleries and museums in New York City. She holds a master's degree in art history and has a special place in her heart for artists. So welcome, Marina. It's so good to have you. Hi, Christy. I'm so excited to be on your podcast. I am down to art today. Ah, I love it. I'm so excited to have you on our podcast And um, yeah, I know a lot about the amazing work you've been doing with the Artist Advisory and working with artists. And I was wondering how you got started on this path. Well, you know, this path started for me, I I mean, we could go really back in time, but um, I was always curious when I was a, a young kid, like the first time I walked into a museum, I was so curious as to how the paintings actually got on the walls and where were all the people that worked there. I was just so confused and curious. And it really started this of a lifelong passion for me uh, around curatorial work, art history, and just discovering the secrets of essentially what is the art world. I didn't even realize it was an art world until I started working in galleries in 2004. And uh, when I was working in galleries, I learned so much. I worked with some amazing people, some amazing artists, and also some not so amazing people. I saw so many artists get the runaround uh, they were, uh, they were oftentimes artists would just come into the gallery and say, hey, how can I show my work here? And I'm like, that's not how this works exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so fast forward to our um, 2016 election <laughs> here in the US. And I was like, so it was so clear to me how important the internet was and how powerful it was and how much it could change the way we perceive things, right? And so I decided to start the Artist Advisory, which is uh, my company that helps artists navigate the art world and also essentially curate how they present themselves and their work online because now with the internet they can get in front of anyone and everyone and this is one of the biggest shifts in the art world that's ever happened I watched it happen because I worked in the art world before the internet was a really big thing And I even remember like the first time we made an online sale in like 2008 through Facebook. It was so crazy. Um, But uh, yeah, so I was like, the internet is such a powerful tool and I'm here to teach artists how to use it and how they can navigate the art world. Um, And so that's how I got here, essentially out of frustration for seeing so many talented artists be uh, given the runaround and be very unclear about how to make their career happen. And yeah, I was like, you know what, I'm going to step right in. Love how like your background, even as a child, and then your work in galleries, like led you gently into this like place where you're at now. Um, yeah, and you mentioned presentation, and actually, I've because we both kind of work with artists sometimes, and so whenever I've had anyone come to me, you know, and I and they've maybe like worked at some point with you, and I take a look at their website, I'm always like, "Whoa, this is really good!" Like, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, me and Marina worked on this, and it's amazing!" Like, uh, the level of professionalism that comes out of the people that you're like working with is really striking. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I know you do talk a lot about presentation and how important it is. Um, Do you want to talk a little bit more about, you know, the types of things that you 
kind of suggest to people around presentation? Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, I think of everything as kind of like a holistic thing. So presentation really matters. But I have um, this like sort of four step method (laughs) that encompasses presentation. And it really starts with the intention of the artist of what they want to do in terms of their career, but also their intention behind their work, because that's at the core of everything. And it flows into the presentation of their work, how they will present it. And then the next step is really to um, master your mindset, because we're being taught so many uh you know false stories about what it is like to work in the art world be an artist anything around art right we always hear about the starving artist myth and you know it's better to be a doctor than an artist and art being an artist is a good hobby so dispelling all of that because once you do that that's when you can truly step into the third step of this method which is to fully align with the presentation that your work deserves. It comes out of having true confidence in your work. And ultimately, it's about presenting your work at the level where you want it to be, where you want to be maybe even in 10 years, right? Because I always tell the artists that I work with, they're sort of like this a shoe store analogy, right? Like you can walk into um, a big box store like Walmart or Target and go to their shoe section and you see a whole bunch of shoes and they're just sort of organized by size, maybe if you're lucky. And then you can walk into a beautiful department store or a luxury store And you can see that this presentation is well thought out and sparse. And so when I work with artists, I advise them to go from the big box store presentation vibe or style into this very luxurious space. And there are a lot of marketing reasons for this, the top which uh, is that in luxury, well, it has been uh long proven that people who tend to buy luxury goods are the ones that tend to buy art right and so aligning with that presentation is important but also there's a reason that luxury goods are displayed that way they're s- displayed to look like a work of art they're displayed to look precious and that's what your artwork is so that's what i do Um, As I teach you how to do this on your website, on your Instagram, how to talk about your work that way as well. And um, I think at the core of everything that I do, right, is the intention. And so when it comes to the fourth step of my method, which is taking action and whatever that means to you, whether it's applying to... Uh, places, a uh, way that you're, where you're presenting your work and how and selling your work and all of these things. At the core of that is understanding why everything is happening, right? What are the galleries looking for? Why are they looking for these things? And then that goes into the presentation of the work. It goes into the actions that you're taking And, um, for example, let me tell you this. When I work with artists, I tell them that on their website, when we go to a portfolio page, it's important to see the work in a grid first. So little thumbnails in a grid. So it's very clear what the development of the work is, how they all look together. And it's super important not to crop the paintings. So if you have two-dimensional work, it's important not to crop it in the thumbnail view so that we can see the orientation of everything. Because when curators or gallerists are looking at this, they have a specific... um, They might have a, a reason 
uh, or uh, uh, an intention behind why they're looking. They might want a vertical painting or artwork, a horizontal one. They need to see the development in your work. So it's important that underneath all of these thumbnails, you have your um, a full description, meaning the title, the date, so they can see the development, the size, so they can visualize the size they're looking at it, and the medium and also whether or not it's available. So if it's sold, you want to say private collection in that caption, because they want to know what they can either buy or consign or sell. Right? Well, so it, there's a lot that it, this is once you learn why what people are looking for, and why it becomes second nature, how you present it. Oh, every time I talk to you, I learn something new. I'm going to add that to my website right away. Um, the the whole available thing. And I like the way you do it too, like private collection or, you know, or if it's in some corporate collection, you know, not sold. I never like sold on my website just because I think it looks tacky, but private collection looks like totally classy. Super fancy. Yeah, Super totally, fancy. Totally. You know, but I got to say, like, there are, if you're an artist who is selling directly to your uh, collector very often, then it might work for you to say sold because sure. it's it's more common to hear that for them. So you have to kind of take everything I say um, and, and think about what... I almost want to say like, take it with a grain of salt. There's no, nothing's written in stone. I'm just giving you these ideas. Yeah, actually it, it makes sense too. Cause I can tell like a lot of my galleries will write sold. So what you're saying, it definitely does like work well for when you're directly selling to people. Um, and I know you put so much stress behind this. Why, like why we do what we do, why, like all of it, always asking why. And one of the big whys is with the elevator pitch, like why we would make the type of work that we do. Do you want to talk about the elevator pitch? Oh my gosh. I just got this idea. Sorry. I'm like, mm -hmm. um, I, I, my mind is everywhere all the time, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to find one of those elevators that has the Barbie, that like see-through <laughs> elevator, has the Barbie box on the outside and take a video going up in it and uh, post it as a reel <laughs> about an elevator pitch. So um, that's my next mission. So if you know <laughs> where these elevators are, <laughs> just please somebody oh, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the elevator pitch. So an elevator pitch is essentially a very quick way for you to describe what your work is so that whoever's listening understands it and remembers it. At the core of who we are as humans is storytelling, right? We either love to gossip or tell stories. <laughs> and whether you're like Aesop with your fables, right? Or you're one of the housewives, you love to tell stories. So um, that is essentially the reason behind the elevator pitch, right? But how I developed it was I was working in galleries forever, but I was also doing art fairs. And when I was standing in a booth like at Art Miami or whatever or Freeze, and I was uh, I had this artwork to sell. And sometimes people would come in, they wouldn't really know the artist. And so I had a very limited amount of time to introduce the artist to them and make it memorable right? Because once it becomes memorable, they can repeat that story to whoever they're at the art fair with to their spouse and say, hey, there's this really cool story about this artwork. Let's go look at it. And then they buy it. That's the ideal, right? Um, and so here is the formula for it. It sounds really simple. It might feel insurmountable <laughs> at first because you're thinking, wait, this is too simple. I don't think I got it right, but here it is. Let's give it a whirl. First pit, uh, first part is to say why you do what you do. Second part is to say how your perspective informs your work. And the third part is to say, 
what you actually do. So if your process is important or, you know, if they're, if your artwork's not in front of these people, you can tell them what you do. So this is the difference between saying, I'm a realist painter <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, something like, uh, you know, I am, um, I love to paint the cosmos uh, or I failed my elevator pitch. It's okay. I'm, re- I'm, stumble on it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really interested in how finite we are, how tiny we are in comparison to the universe. As a matter of fact, I studied astronomy at the graduate level before I decided to become an artist. And so... Now I make these large scale oil paintings of uh, various nebulas to explore our um, size in relation to the universe, right? Like, I don't know. I just came up with this off the top of my head. I don't really. Good. (laughs) But that's the idea. So you really want to go. Um, sometimes it's easier to piece it together by saying like, okay, like what, how, what's my perspective and then going into why you do what you do and then what you do, but it becomes so much more memorable. And the key here is also not to say everything all at once, tell them just those three sentences, because it's going to start a deeper conversation. Oh, that's so useful. And I know like when we've done it, I always was leaving out the why. It seems like that gets left out, like if we're not conscious about it. And that is like the most important part, like, and it can help with the artist statement writing. Like once you have the why, it just makes everything more interesting. (laughs) And you can also, and you, you told me this, build it into like your Instagram stories, just kind of constantly be pushing why you do this, like what your background is, just to make your work sort of more relatable in that way. Once you have this elevator pitch sort of figured out, it's so valuable. Yeah. So Um, like, for example, if you're into, you know, if that was your elevator pitch, what you might do is you might look to, you know, you're already researching all of this, like how small we are in relation to the universe. And you might start to follow accounts that are maybe astronomy accounts or philosophy accounts or whatever that um, have posts about this sort of thing all the time. And what you want to do is you want to share those posts in your stories because uh, the, the thing is people are going to your account to learn about this as well. So... To them, you feel like an authority when you share all of these posts in your stories. But if you tag the original account, there's a chance that they might repost your story to their audience that definitely cares about what kind of artwork, uh, about the the themes behind your work. Oh, that's so true. I love that. Yeah, so they can like go to your account and then you get genuine followers you may not get a ton but you get people who are truly invested and that's what matters yeah and people get to understand your work at this deeper level it's so smart oh I just love all of the things that you like bring to the table um and you have the artist advisory of course and you're starting a new system with it and do you want to tell us a little bit about about that Yeah, so I am just, I have had the pleasure of presenting the Artist Academy, which is an online course. I've presented it live uh, now 12 times. It's sold out every time. And I feel like every time artists are like, wait, when can I join? What can I do? You know, and so uh, what I'm doing is restructuring my offers for everyone. So now this is a course that is available to you at any time. You can take it. There are video modules and you can go through them at your own pace. And the beautiful thing about this course is that it really teaches you the business behind being an artist from 
the point of understanding why certain institutions do what they do, what they're looking for. So it really sets you up to succeed going forward forever, right? Because you learn what is the intention of not just any gallery, but the various different types of galleries. What is the intention behind museums? You learn about the types of museums, right? You might think, oh, there's only one type of gallery. There's only one type of museum. Oh, there are so many. For example, there are museums that collect artwork and there are museums that don't, collecting and non-collecting, right? There are private and public institutions. Um, Museums that are public, for example, at the core of their mission is to engage their demographic that's around them. The core of their mission is civic engagement, which is how they get funding for their museum, (laughs) right? So when you learn some of these things, you can figure out, oh, well, if my work really engages the community, how do I get, uh, and, and I teach you how to do this, how to get in front of the the movers and shakers and the decision makers in that museum so you can potentially get your work in there. Yeah. Oh, I just love too how it always comes back to why. Like, okay, so now understanding the mission of the museum or the, you know, or the gallery that you're submitting to, like, and then kind of, you know, formulating your like submission in that way. And uh, like I say, everyone who it's like before people even tell me that they've like worked with you, I can see it. <laughs> Like because uh, of course, a high level of professionalism, or only I don't necessarily know that they've worked with you. I just think, whoa, this artist is top notch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it just looks it's so yeah. like well figured yeah. out. It's so valuable. Mm-hmm. Like what you, yeah, what you are. Well, you know, I love to also refer artists to you because oh. you are so you're so smart and you're so talented and just passing on that talent is so generous of you and you do it so well. (laughs) So thank you. Yeah. Um, And then, so where can people find out more about the artist advisory and and all of your offerings? Yeah. So um, first of all, I also have a podcast so you can tune into that. Christy was recently a guest and I, it was so fun to, it's always fun to hang out with you, Christy. Um, And that is called the Artist Advisory Hotline. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and probably a few other places. Um, And I also have a website, theartistadvisory.com. Uh, hopefully it'll be linked in the show notes so you can just tap on that and uh, follow me on Instagram at the underscore artist underscore advisory. And I'll definitely include links to all of that in the notes in the description of the podcast. And I think you mentioned that you were offering a free masterclass. I'll include a link to that as well. But do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh my gosh, this is so new because... (laughs) Um, and that's why I did not mention it earlier, but since you're sticking around, mm-hmm. you know, this master class is really for artists of all levels when they feel like they're, they really are, they want that extra push into uh, the next step of their career. And they want to take the guesswork out of where to go and what's the next step. And essentially how they can get to the next step to show more and sell more. This is the masterclass for you. So I will, uh, you can go to my website and grab the class on there, or you can go to my Instagram and have my link in bio and grab the class there as well. Oh, it sounds really good. I'm going to check it out. (laughs) And and everyone's going to just love that. They're so lucky with all the content that you're putting out and it's free for everyone to enjoy. Um, I'm so excited to, to check it out. Um, yeah. Oh, well, it's been so good talking to you. I just, I learn something every single time I talk and every time I see like artists who've worked with you, I can tell that they have because it just looks so good. So you just do so much for all of the artists in our community. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Christy. It has been a total pleasure. I agree. Well, I'll talk to you soon, Rena. Mm-hmm. 
Bye. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Down to Art. Thank you so much for being with us.